What do we do with you, Mr. Ford? Since May of this year alone, in the last month, aggravated assault, violation of a protective order, evading arrest, assault of a peace officer, attempted escape, violation of a protective order, and now DWI second. All within one month, perhaps one and a half months. And yet you get another PR bond. <clears throat> We're going to do probable cause. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you, sir. You have the right to have an attorney present. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you, sir. Judge, on May 31st, 2024, officers were dispatched to a DWI following call at North Shepherd Drive in Timberwell Road. Reporting the defendant's child called, stated his father was driving intoxicated and his mother was in the passenger seat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Child is in the car? Calling cops saying dad's drunk driving. That's that's what it yes, your honor said that is it, well, no it, it's not it's not clear if he was actually it was clear from what I'm reading, your honor. Uh, I have to do further. I'm not sure if the child called from another location or if he was actually in the car. Um, but the child called said his father was intoxicated. Uh, If you allow me, you're on a complete, and I'll, I'll follow up on the, the location Thank of the child. Call. I'm in no rush. <laughs> so, report by the, the reporting, which was the defendant's child, called and stated his father was driving intoxicated, his mother was in the passenger seat. Officers located the defendant's vehicle. Officers observed the defendant in the driver's seat with the ignition on. Officers observed the defendant to have slurred speech and a smell of alcohol coming from his person. Officers observed an open container in the defendant's vehicle, later observed to be a cold, to the touch, almost full 12 ounce Bud Light bottle. Defendant admitted to driving with his wife in the passenger seat and consuming two to three Bud Light beers, 12 ounces. SFSTs, four out of six, horizontal gaze nystagmus, five out of eight walking turns, two out of four one leg stands. DIC was red. Defendant consented to a breath test, but later refused the test while at JP, uh, JPC. A blood warrant was signed and executed. Fire DWI from Harris County, 1996. Uh, and he did 20 days in Harris County jails. And of course, there's a, if, if Your Honor, you've already pointed out uh, the extensive uh, criminal history of the defendant that stands before now, you today, Your Honor. I can't, in good conscience, justify giving you a PR bond, Mr. Blunt. It goes with you. A little longer than a few minutes later. What you got? I uh, got a plea, a plea from Patterson. Uh, I'm going to say hi about our case. You can call me as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to draw your attention. Yeah. I'm not going to try to present. Carol. Mr. Blunt, we just want to be a quick show to Mr. Blunt. Yeah. Um, so, 
what I'm going to do is do you, um, Deputy, is it Galvin, right? Do you mind bringing out Mr. Blunt, please? Oh, no, well, this is DBI. DBI case, Mr. Blunt, the one you're reading earlier about the minor and all that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Judge, we're going to ask if you could reconsider the facts um, and whether or not you your bond because it wasn't quite how they started. Um, um, no, no. We should, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I, and I'll, I'll explain it to you when, when he gets out here, okay, so that he can hear it too. Okay, but since know, it's his case, I want him to hear everything I have to say. It wasn't a minor, Judge. No one even. I, I understand. There it has. It's like a regular stop or officer program. I understand. Program. I get it. I get it. But that's. That's only one of my eight concerns, Harold. You know, and I and I can tell you that. Well, let me explain when he gets out. My hands weren't clean, but it wasn't like he. It wasn't like he described at the beginning. No, please, guys, keep it down. You know, Mr. Blunt, this life is about two things, perspective and self-control. And I will tell you that I have a very good friend of mine battling breast cancer that has now metastasized to her bones and her ribs. This lady is one of the most well-regarded maternal fetal medicine doctors that saves babies' lives on a daily basis, battling cancer, written books, I mean, top tier of the community, battling this, who goes through life in such a fashion to help people. Yet, we have you here in front of us where you have violent felony, after violent felony, after violent felony, who has now picked up a DWI second, where allegedly people are calling cops because a father has two beers in the car, allegedly driving. <clears throat> How's that for perspective, Mr. Blunt, where I, After hearing the facts and after hearing your continual danger to public safety, how can I justify doing a PR bond, Mr. Landrino? Truly, I don't think that a, a PR bond is sufficient. Judge, Mr. Mullen has been incarcerated for quite a while before this. He got it last year. He's been trying to make a new life for himself. He has a, a job, a company cutting yards. He has a lot of yards set up for this weekend. Um, if you look at just this stop here, I mean, I know it's the second DVI. The first one was 29 years ago. Well, that's a long time to have not done anything that, you know, with alcohol. Um, and his daughter calls suspecting him of drunk driving. And then they respond to the call. They find the car. Him and his wife are talking in a parking lot at one o'clock in the morning. And there's no bad driving. There's no accident, no crash. No bad driving. We have a child calling the cops scared that he's there's and he's got two open beers in the car. There's, there's no bad driving. And is there two beers? I think there's one beer, Judge. And it was almost full. So I mean that in itself, yeah, we don't have clean hands. No drink drink two or three beers, but there's not two beers in the car. There's one open container, Judge. So we don't have clean hands on this. And it's not perfect, but in all fairness, the last time that Mr. Blunt was out before he was in jail, you could actually have a beer, I think, in the back seat. And drive in a car, but now you can't. You change the law. So I mean, 
This is how long he had been in jail before all this, when he got out last year. So this is the same man that was had the violent felonies before this. You know? He's kind of he's turned his life around trying to. Um, but I was talking with him about this in the back, and it seems like when he makes a mistake now, it's not like a normal person making a mistake. I mean, everything's hyper attenuated on him. So he makes a mistake any one of us might make, any one of us, but you know, you have an old container in the car, you're, you, you drive a little erratic and you've had a few beers, made a bad decision. Well, now he's going to jail automatically. He didn't get the benefit of the doubt. And I don't think that's really fair. But in all fairness, uh, my colleague here, when he was reading the, the Dems first, <clears throat> he said something about, I think a minor, and then, I don't know, maybe you thought he, the child was in the car. I think I heard that, I was half right. listening. It was before I was appointed. And um, it's not a child of the 20 years old, and they weren't in the car, in the call from the house. So it'd be like anyone calling from, hey, I, I saw a guy shoot a woman or something, got in the car and drove out with a bad description and the cops pulled him over. I mean, it could be anybody calling to harass it's another person and the police are being used as an instrument to harass someone. Uh, I don't know the, you know, anything behind the daughter's actions by calling. Um, we still have the blood results back to see what his blood was that night. Um, he only got four of six on the HGN judge. Usually it's always six of six every time I see one of these DBIs. And, you know, these are all just facts to point out that. Just for a point of record, you are, it was, I said the retortee, which was the defendant's child. That's why I said the reporting. But again, it was somebody that wasn't there at the scene. And he had the key of the ignition, I guess, was on, but he wasn't driving. I know that case law says that is operating, but um, again, just no accident, no crash. Nothing you would see in um, most of the day guys when people are charged with this. And I don't know if it's fair to hold him more highly accountable than a regular person based on his past. In a month, he's had five felony cases, Harold. I don't think the other cases, Judge, he's worked them out, but they were last year, I believe. The other felony cases, and they, he had worked them out on the 20th of May, Russell. Mr. Blunt, I want you to know that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride you so hard now, you're going to think that we're in a damn rodeo. You're going to report to me three times a week here to prove to me that you're not consuming alcohol or dope. You will report to me every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday here. I, I don't know. I don't know about giving him a PR bond. I haven't decided, but I want to tell you now, you will report to me here every Monday, Thursday, and Friday. You will be signing an affidavit that you're not to drive and not to consume alcohol or legal drugs. And if I find that you do, I will have a contempt hearing. I will slap you with 180 days. If you do probate it for two years and put you in a lockdown rehab facility where you will be stuck like Chuck for a minimum of nine months, depending on how well you respond to treatment. The only thing I care about in this life is public safety. You continually violate that. How on earth can I justify letting you out on a free bond when it's case after case after case after case? How many aggravated robberies? How many aggravated assaults? And now a DWI where you're allegedly in the car where we have people calling because they're so concerned. Three times a week, you will report to me at 8.30 here to take a drug and alcohol test. Do you understand me, sir? And the one time you failed to come here, holy moly, I'm going to light you up. On one ankle, I'm going to put a scram monitor so I know that you're not consuming alcohol. Under your other leg, I'm going to put a GPS monitor and I'm giving you a curfew of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. If you think that this is going to be an easy ride, you are sorely mistaken. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be, by the end, you're going to be so sick that I hope that it will, you will think twice before making a move while you're out there in the free world.
You are not to be in possession of your weapons. <laughs> you understand what's expected of you. Come up here. I'm going to have you swear to us that you're not going to consume alcohol, drugs, no weapons. I'm not giving her a PR bond yet. I, I haven't. I don't know, Harold. I'm just, I don't know how on earth I could 